super proud uh, of this group of guys to, you know, just kind of keep steady, stay the course, keep working. We had a great week of prep. The energy in this building has been phenomenal all week. I think they been talking to them about how close I thought we were. And, and that's easy to say. It's, it's much more difficult to believe when things aren't going the way you want. <clears throat> uh, but clearly, you saw, you know, a, a more, I don't know, a more seasoned group, uh, a group that stayed together. And, and you know, as he said, we still had to come from behind, but it's a good football team. And, and I felt like it, you know, it was going to be a battle. I really did. I love the fact that as the game just continued, uh, we got tougher, we got faster, uh, more physical than they were. That was really the conversation all week was uh, they're going to be twitchy early. They're going to be flashy and explosive early, but uh, keep hitting them in the mouth. And our toughness and our conditioning and just the way we do things is going to show up in, in that they could just hang in and, and not not give up on the process that the process would start to take hold. And I think that's exactly what you saw tonight. They got a really good football team, a really well-built football team. And, and we just we wanted to make it a mess. We wanted to we wanted to make it a a dog fight and, and our guys didn't back down from that and played probably our best game, you know, of the season. So I don't want them to be satisfied. I want them to keep working and keep working to get better. I think there's still better football to be played. We turn the ball over too much. And um and that's something that we gotta fix. But uh, you know, there's a lot of good things to build on tonight. Um lifting up Steven constantly, you know, it was a that's a real injury and and, and a se season ending injury. Uh, just our thoughts and prayers are with him right now. What questions do you have? Andrew, I guess about Tom, you just commented more on Stephen Cosley, what he meant to the team. And, I mean, the student section is all chanting MVP as he got <laughs> off the field. But he's what just, does he mean? He, what, tell me a little bit about that. Play. Well, I mean, he's a great punter, but but just beyond that, he's just, he's just an unbelievable kid. I say kid, he's a grown man, I guess, at this point. But just um, – I don't know, always willing to serve the guys on his team, do anything he can for the community, always give him back. I mean, this has really become his home. He doesn't get to go home very often. He's here way more than uh, everybody else. Uh, just, just you hate to see his career or at least the season end that way. And um, But you could tell, man, our kids' hearts were broken that, that, that that's what happened. And you never want to see that in, in a game. But great kid, great teammate, one of my favorite dudes to be around. And uh, hate that for him, but you know he'll come back strong. That's just who he is. Yeah, I don't. Uh, I don't know if you could script a, the very next play to be any better than it was. To uh, I mean, I just handed the ball off. I wasn't. I mean, we weren't trying to. We weren't trying to throw a bomb there. Thought about it, but didn't. Just felt like do what do what you need to to finish the game the right way, and we did. I called the timeout to bring everybody up just to try to calm everybody down there. You know, they want to. Everybody's upset, uh, and with the exception of Poulet's penalty, everybody did a really good job uh, of calming down and taking a deep breath and finishing. Uh, so uh, it's good to see, but that doesn't surprise me about this t this team. It could have been anybody laying on the turf, and they'd have handled it the same way. Yeah. With that start going down 17-0, a bit more special teams related. Encouraging um, <clears throat> that happened a different way, or maybe more frustrating than it happened. Ah uh, man, if you're looking for silver linings. Really difficult uh, there. Man, we just we just they're a good football team. Um I mean you gotta give them credit. They made plays early. They made it hard for us to block. I didn't I was honestly not sure we were gonna be able to throw a forward pass all night long after the first two series. I mean, they were getting there quick. Uh, it took a while to fatigue them and, and that to start calm down. The kickoff return, they got good bodies out there. They're very physical on their return teams. We did get one holding call. Thought we could have got one on every kickoff return. They just wouldn't call it. I screamed and hollered all night and didn't get it. Uh, and they're, they're a good football team. I, I don't. Doesn't surprise me that they played well early. Um, and it doesn't surprise me that we struggled offensively to cover them up as good as their front is. So uh, I would have loved for it to have been you know seven to nothing or ten to nothing. But giving up the kick return is always just brutal. And, and so we did a much better job pinned them in deep the rest of the game, little by little, didn't give up another big return. So in that sense, I was really pleased. Coach Anderson, uh, I mean, from getting pressure on their, their young quarterback tonight to just playing well in the back end, uh, how, how, how fun 
Sometimes it's see everything kind of come together for your defense. Yeah, I mean, they took a lot of criticism from last week of struggling. Uh, we got tired and kind of got beat up a little bit, and, and I think they just had a big chip on their shoulder. Uh, we we did things that we had to do tonight. We competed well at the point of attack. You're right, we we got pressure. They didn't try to run it much when we did. When they did, we hit them. We hit them hard. And I think I don't think Tory Horton didn't finish the game. He got hit hard. We knew we had to be physical. Uh, matched up relatively well in, in most areas. So, I mean, that's a that's a good. I mean, Joe will tell you more points on the board than he wants to be there. But against that offense and what they've been doing, uh, that's pretty pretty good outing for our defense and really just team in general. Kind of on that note, obviously, this team averages 380. 83 passing yards a game, you finished with 225. That's certainly a big accomplishment yeah. for this defense. No doubt. Great game. Uh, it took, you know, everybody did a great job. Um, I thought we played well in man coverage for most of the night. Uh, we're able to play with technique. I mean, we got one pass interference that I'm still not sure. I I, I, I don't agree with it. Um, but, um, man, we batted balls up, got to the quarterback, made him get off his mark. I mean, it, it, was, it was a really, really good defensive effort against a very good offensive football team. And I think you got to say the same thing about the offense. That's a really good defensive front that little by little we chipped away and got them tired and started kind of doing what we wanted to do. Um, I don't know what the numbers were, but I would think they'd be pretty good. Yeah, speaking of the numbers, three receivers up over 100 yards receiving, how was it important was it for that trio to really step up? It's huge. You know, we felt like they were better than us uh, up front and just in terms of, you know, being able to get to the quarterback. And that's what they live on. We thought we were better than them out in space. And so the ability to stay balanced and run the ball and to at least get them breathing hard enough that we could start protecting and let our, our skill show up, uh, that was, that was you know, really the game plan, like hang in there, hang in there, get the first first down. But uh, you know, I think you saw what we're capable of with our wideouts in space. We've recruited really well. Uh, Cephalo's doing a phenomenal job teaching those guys. And if I, you know, when Coop calms down and takes a deep breath and does what I ask him to do, he can do some great things. I wanted to choke him a couple times tonight, but, you know, I, you got to give him credit. He took a butt chewing, a couple of them. He took a deep breath. He went out and, and didn't quit playing and made some huge plays coming off some mistakes that could could have cost you the game. Uh, so it's, um, yeah, I'm proud of proud of that group and, and just what they're able to do and how explosive they're able to be. But it takes everybody. Without the old line, without I mean, it takes everybody for those guys to succeed like they are. Following up on that, obviously Coop did not start the game, especially well with those two interceptions. What did he do different? What did you guys what how did he approach it differently? Uh, you know, I, I think he I mean he, he took a good, good butt chewing, a couple of them, as I said. He he just he he, he kind of reached a point where he calmed down. Um and just kind of stayed within what we're asking him to do. He still made a couple mistakes later. The fumble, he, he missed the protection there. and That should have been a routine play. Shouldn't have been a fumble. You know, I, I think the one thing that he's doing really well right now is just kind of continuing the process. When things don't go well, he doesn't go in the tank on me. He takes a good, uh, you know, good butt chewing and and responds, and then goes out and does what I'm asking him to do. And, uh, you know, I think we've got the people if he'll. If he can do that consistently, we've got the people to help him. He doesn't have to carry the load. So just his resiliency is one of his biggest attributes and characteristics that allows him to, to do what you saw tonight, to do what he did last week. What was the mindset of the team when down 17 here? Did you kind of have to say, give them a butt to it? Or no. Did, you, did they stick with it? They just stuck with it. I, mean, we, we, I kind of talked to him about it a little bit this week. Just, hey, keep in mind who's coming in what they're number one capable of on offense, just how good they are on the defensive front. It, it, you know, It's a possible scenario where they come in geeked up, ready to go early, and it's tough. But we're going to make this a 60-minute game, and our conditioning is going to pay out, and our physical toughness is going to pay out, and the way we're willing to play is going to play out. And they just – there never was a panic. There never was a panic. And I thought the defense did a great job of just staying in there and hanging in there and – and kind of lifting each other up. And then we got the offense rolling. And when we do, obviously, there's a lot of fun things we can do. But sometimes it takes a little bit longer to, to get going than we'd all like. And you kind of alluded to it there, but what is something that you like most about your team right now? What's, your, what's, what's something you can hang your hat on? Uh, just the willingness to continue to play, continue to fight. We saw that. Uh, you know, We've seen it in every game. 
didn't get the result we wanted against James Madison, but same thing, same thing last week. They will continue to fight. They will not give up. Group loves each other, cares about each other, cares about the staff. Man, they know that we're we're getting better every week. I still we still got a long way to go to be just as good as we can be. But it's it's a lot of fun when you consider how many young guys are playing that haven't played before, and just some of the steps we're starting to take in the right direction. Going back to that trio of receivers, those are the only three players to catch a pass for your team today. Was they are. Correct. Wow, we tried to throw it to some other people. <laughs> was, was that in the game plan to kind of stick to those guys, or was it well, like, I mean, we just. Just feel like those guys are explosive. I mean, we we tried to get the ball to Brock. We tried to get the ball to Colby. Just those opportunities didn't present themselves. Uh, I'm not necessarily targeting individuals as much as you might think, but when the defense plays you a certain way, you take advantage of what they're giving you. And that is the one thing I thought Coop did a really good job. He saw the singles, the one on ones, and took advantage of those. And, and with a little bit better ball placement, there's a couple of those balls that are probably completed as well. Uh, but you got to give him credit. He kept going back to it. He wasn't afraid to go back to it. I mean, I'd love for a lot of guys to catch ball, but those are the three guys that you know that, that got it done tonight, uh, and, and need to keep doing that for us. That that opens up the field in a big, big way. Seems like we talk about Ike every week, but he's a pretty good player. <laughs> well, uh, obviously, he's an incredible playmaker on defense with the takeaways and the blocks he makes on special teams. What is it about him that makes him be in the right spot at the right time? Uh, guys- I'd love to tell you it's coaching, but and, and there's a lot of that going on. I do think our guys are doing a great job preparing our defensive guys. Uh, you saw it tonight. They they had a good beat on what they were going to see, and we played schematically really well. But, I mean, the guy just has a knack for finding the ball. And his people, he and Switz and MJ, those guys just – they're calm in the moment. Their body control at the point of attack is really, really good. And, I mean, I just – that's why he's blocked all these kicks. He's not afraid of the moment. It's Most people get there, honestly, and can't make the play. They miss it. They close their eyes. Their back technique is bad. I don't know. When the moment gets bigger, he tends to get better. And, and that's that's a great trait to have. Yeah, and just how, how big is it for him to basically get a 50-50 ball against one of the best receivers? Yeah, no doubt. And come down with it. It's, that tells you what he's you know, capable of. He, he keeps telling me he wants to play offense too. So, uh, but I got three pretty good wideouts. And don't know that, don't know that we're going to do that or not. But I, I just think a knack for playing the ball, a knack for being right there in the, I don't know, kind of the eye of the tornado, just calms down for him, and he's able to control his body, play above the rim, and, and make the play. And I think that's a very rare skill. A lot of guys panic in that moment and crab or get themselves out of position. He tends to slow down, calm down, and, and be able to make the play when we need him to. I mean, he's he's got an amazing career ahead of him. Just stays healthy and keeps doing what he's doing. When asked about Jordan Courtney, three receptions for 20 yards, this is two years in a row now that you guys have forced just some other laps. Um, how have you done that? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I want to tell her about that. Uh, <laughs> no, I think I, I think they saw a lot of different looks. Uh, we we didn't just play them one way. Um, I thought it was collective. We got pressure on the quarterback, made him get the ball out earlier than he'd like at times. In the back end, we alluded to just how competitive they were at the point of attack. Uh, I, I think it takes a lot of things. He's too good. I mean, that guy's going to play in the NFL. He's going to make – he'll have a career, a, a big career. And I, I just – I think variety of coverages, other – you know, multiple people being involved with the addition of, of pressure and blitzing when you need to. and Changing the pitches. You, you can't just throw fastballs all night. you got to change pitches, and Joe did a really good job of that tonight. Anything else for Coach? I got one more. So, with Lagos' performance, I've just played pretty well. I'm going to cite him to You may ask this. You may ask this question for you. Huh? Yeah, Lagos, like, like, what are the odds he, he plays some when he'll stay? Well, I, I, I don't have a clue. I really don't. I'm going to keep competing and evaluating. I, I would never make a decision without watching the tape thoroughly. And – I mean, he made some mistakes tonight you can't make. We're lucky that we survived. But uh, I don't know when McKay's going to be ready. He may not be ready this week with a Friday game with Fresno. Uh, I, I'm just going to keep coaching the crap out of both of them and try to get them both better, and, and we'll see where that goes. But, uh, you know, just all I ask them is keep doing doing the little things right every day. and It's going to take both of them to win. This is a tough physical schedule. Uh, uh, you know, the chances of both of those guys staying healthy for the next – Six weeks is pretty dang small. So it, uh, 
we'll deal with that one week at a time. But I'm pleased with what it, what Coop's done the last two weeks to give us a chance. Good. Thanks. Thank you. I've asked coach to let me play both ways, but it's it's all jokes. But nah, it would be cool. But I'm definitely a defensive guy. So. What did you see out there today? What was working? Your eyes flying around? Nah, just us sticking to the game plan, just flying around, doing what we do best. You know, like when we play teams like this, I throw the ball. That's when we're the best for sure. Because you know we can cover, we can come downhill and make tackles when we need to too. So I mean that game was awesome. We feel good about it. So. And as a defense that was trailing, you know, seventeen zero to start the game. <laughs> yeah, honestly, it's bad, but trailing isn't anything new. I mean, so we're kind of used to being in that spot. So, I mean, we really just stick to the game plan. And, you know, like, it's sad to say we're kind of a second half team right now. We're trying to build that up to be a first half team and, you know, be able to go all four quarters. But, I mean, we're confident in our game plan. So we just really stick to it and, you know, do what we can do. Yeah. He, he forced him into a pretty bad pass there. Mm -hmm. How nice was it to get some help from the defensive line and, uh, as, as a secondary tonight? Yeah, at the end of the day, I mean, our interceptions, 99% of them come from, you know, pressure from the D-line or linebackers. So, you know, with them pressuring them doing their job, it helps us. You know, it makes our jobs easier. So when a quarterback throws a ball like that, it's easy to get. So, um, but yeah, you know, props to D-line, Holly. You know, everybody else, our linebackers putting pressure, you know, to make that happen. So. What makes this defense well suited to play against the air raid. I just feel like, you know, we got a we got a good knack for the ball. We can cover people. So I mean that's what we do, really. And like we've done that for the past three years now since Coach A's been here. You know. So I feel like that's definitely our strength in our defense. So it's really just it's what we do. So all inter all interceptions are, are special, but uh, I mean basically 50-50 ball against Horton, one of the best yeah. guys in the country. How how extra special is it for you to prove yourself against that level of athlete? Uh, yeah, it's awesome. I mean, all week I was telling myself, you know, I got to any when the time comes, you know, if I'm guarding him, I got to do my job. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, getting that interception, especially against him, you know, it was a great feeling. He's a great player. You know, I hope he's all good. I know he went out and didn't come back in the game, but um, it was an awesome, awesome feeling. So, you have a few games where you gave up a lot of passing yards, um, but today I was having a really good game. To, what would it mean if you guys to have a really good game? defending the pass, especially against teams as good as yeah. Colorado State. Um, it's awesome. Like I said before, you know, it's kind of just sticking to the game plan. You know, things, you know, things are going to be really good at one point and then things are going to be really bad. So we can't buy into when things get rough, you know, out there on the field and, you know, duck our heads and, you know, mount, uh, pout and mope around. So it's really just sticking to the game plan and trusting the process. You feel like this team has turned a corner. You guys have won back-to-back -back games. Do you think you've got a little bit over that hump? Uh, yeah, I hope so. I mean, energy's been good. Energy was good all last week, you know, and then this week, preparation for Colorado State. Um, so, I mean, shoot, all we can really do is, you know, keep keep building off of it and, you know, hope to, you know, go out and win another game. You know, if we can play our best, like win, lose, or draw, we're going to be happy with the results. So. You ended up getting five turnovers tonight uh, as a defense. You guys focus on that a lot in practice. How did yeah. that happen? Yeah, Coach Joe definitely emphasizes, you know, punching at the ball. And then Coach White emphasized, you know, getting and winning the 50-50 ball. So we practice that every single day in practice. So, you know, it showed up tonight big time. So. Coach talked about how he, uh, he ripped you out a little bit after those first two interceptions. What was, what did you do different after those balls? What did you change about how you were playing? Um, watching film, I expected there to be enough separation to just try to put it right on the receiver. And so that's what I was trying to do at the start. And the DBs made two really good plays that I haven't seen them make all year on film. So it was two really good plays and I was the one that paid for it. So offense started off bad. A lot of that was me with the wrong ball selection. So I think I just realized they really came to play today and I needed to put it out where the guys could go get it. So the first two were on me. I, saw what they were doing, how they were playing it, and, and adjusted. Can you just talk about these last two weeks, what you've been feeling, the emotional, I mean, seeing McKay go down in that last game, going back onto the field, play a really good game last weekend this week. Mm -hmm. What does it mean to you? How it, what, what are your emotions? What have your emotions been like these past two weeks? Um, I mean, nobody wants to be benched, but I've prepared the same since I got here as a freshman. It's the same every week. I'm preparing as if I'm going to play and – whether that means I'm the one starting out the game or the one that comes in when the guy goes down, 
I prepare the same and I'm ready to go the same and whoever's in, I'm helping them out as much as I can. So sucks that McKay's hurt and he'll, he'll be back and be good, but it was, it was fun watching him and I prepared as if I was going to play this whole time. So. So how has it felt for you? Cause you know, a lot of guys look at bench and make mistakes. They don't always get a chance to make up for that. You've been given that chance and played mm -hmm. very well in your recent appearances. What has that meant to you to be able to play like this? Um, I mean, I knew I could play like this, and I feel like I'm not going to screw up my chance again if I, if I get it. So just calm down and play, and what's the worst that can happen? I get benched. So just be confident and go out there and play. Cooper, I mean, how fun is it as a quarterback when everything starts clicking, the bonds running hard, guys are making contested catches, uh, breaking tackles? Uh, I mean, how much does that have to help you just relax and go out there and play your game? Yeah, it's it's super fun. It's it's tough, like you see in the first quarter when nothing's really hitting and I'm getting hit when I throw it and everything seems like it's just going bad. So all it really takes is one big play and, and you can feel the energy shift and and we got that and never really stopped. So that's that's because of the O-line stepping up and we have a bunch of playmakers with the running backs and wide receivers. So. As soon as they get the spark going, then I think we've, we've done a good job of rolling with it. We've just struggled getting the spark early. What can you say about these receivers you guys have over 100 yards today with uh, like Terrell and Jared? How well did they play? Um, all awesome playmakers. They show it every day in practice, and they all want the ball as much as anyone. So they're doing everything they can to be open on every play. And if it comes to them, they're going to make the most of it, whether it's contested or they're wide open, they're going to take it and make the most of it. You mentioned how you were getting hit early in the game. They were getting a lot of pressure from the defensive front. Yeah. What changed? What settled down from your offensive line? Kind of what enabled you guys to? Um, I mean, they have a really fast, strong D line, and it also was on me. There was a couple plays I wasn't checking the protection like I should have. So if a guy came free, it was probably because I didn't change the protection to have that guy accounted for. So a little bit, some of the early stuff was on me. I need to be able to see things more clearly and know what we're trying to get at. So I got to let the O-line know what to do and then they'll take the rest from there. But yeah, I missed a couple checks early. Anything else for Cooper? I got one more. I mean, you talked about those receivers and it seems like a lot of those balls, like you said, were contested, but they came down what seems like most of them, mm -hmm. what, what, how, what does it mean to you to have receivers like that that are able to come down and throw it more than you as a quarterback? I mean, you need those plays when you're playing good teams because it's really hard to get a guy wide open. So sometimes you just got to put it up and trust that they're going to get it, and, and they started doing that. So it was awesome. I, I just had one more quick one. I, you've been around Steven for a while now. How, how motivated were you guys to kind of uh, make a big play after seeing Steven go down there? I mean, we all pretty much knew we had the game secured at that point. So it was really just made the win a lot less fun losing a guy like that. And so we were we knew we had to finish the game regardless whether he was out or in. So I think it was an awesome run. Was it Booth had the last one? Yeah. So stepped up, took it to the house and created a lot of energy. Steven, he's already texted the team. He's He's being really positive. He's a great guy. So, yeah, he'll he'll probably be out for a while after what I saw. But, yeah, it's, it makes it a lot less fun, even though we're all stoked.